Hi, my name is Larry Ekundaya, the natural. You're watching Shadow Boxing UK. I will be fighting on the 14th of December at your club, Efta Green, home of boxing. Before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed to Shadow Boxing UK, please go ahead and do so now. Hi and welcome to Larry Ependeo, aka The Natural. How are you doing? Doing great, thank you. How are you? I'm really well. Good to see you and thanks very much for letting us have a little sneak around watch you in your training camp. Um, let me tell the viewers a little bit about you, former prize fighter, current IBF European welterweight title holder. That's it. You forgot the African title. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It, international it, Masters. It was the International That's Masters. Sorry, I, I, I did do my research. That's it. <laughs> this is your first um, defence of your title. Yes. Um, and you were boxing on December the 14th? Correct. Yeah. Opponent, uh, yeah? Yeah. Um, Louis Greening. Uh, uh, everyone speaks highly about him. Really good fighter. Um, aggressive. As, uh, he was showing in his video, good opponent, and um, actually looking forward to it. Yeah, nice. I I watched your uh, the, the, the fight between you and John Payne. Uh, I was actually there. I'm not going to lie to you, Larry. I've been tucked away on the amateur scene for 20 years, so I didn't know who you were. However, I stopped and I started to watch your fight, and I was like, okay, this is something a bit special. Um, Thank you. No, totally. Um, so you beat, just so the fans are up to date, you beat uh, John with a unanimous decision in, was it June or July? July. July, July this year. Uh, I have to say, and this is no disrespect to, to John Fame, you made him a cold win. Oh, um, thank you. Just talk me through that. Talk me through that. Sorry. Well, um, I think there's, uh, in this sport, if you have a level playing field, you get to see the ability of a of a high quality fighter when you properly train for someone, um, which is your opponent, rather than getting the last minute call or something like that, or changing opponent to the last minute. Um, John Fain was known as one of the tough um, world weight. Um, got the height, got the boxing brain, and he is strong, um, it's clever. Um, have a good quality training camp, um, good sparring, like literally dedicating every every bit of the camp to John Fain. Sparring, get someone that boxes just like him, yeah. same height, everything. And um, did my homework right. And, um, you, you most certainly did do your homework because um, he he's no fool. No, he, has a, he has a, a high boxing IQ. And for the first sort of three rounds, um, he really tried to draw you in and counter. You weren't playing that game at all. <laughs> no, it's, 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 you were that it's, game it's something that we've seen. We I sat down with my team. We, you know, we see what he do well, what he does well, and what the other side. And um, we have a face one, face two, even three and four. If you know, and um, I have to open my brain that like, literally to make sure. I stick, I stick to the game plan. Sometimes I switched off for a split second and I have my team like, look, you can't take your foot off the gas. Yeah. You have to stay awake all the time. So let's talk about those phases because uh, from round three onwards, um, there was some lovely little shit. One, one of the things that I do like about you is you, you're very rarely a step half a step away from your opponent. So you're able to use those little body defences to get out of the way, but you're then there to counter off them. And that's, you were doing a lot of that. So the first of the three rounds, you were using your hands. Then you were using just your feet and your upper body. And he was getting super frustrated. That's the plan. Um, I know you can land the shot, even if I pull my guards up, 
you still know that it's like you're punching a bag. So, but when you can't actually land the shot, it becomes frustrating, mm -hmm. which is what I got him to do in the first, first three, four game to be able to land and I make sure that's like for me to check my defense as well. Even though it's landing, it's not scoring. Yes. I just want to make sure that is tight and um, take that away from him. It's a completely different ball game because he has to then readjust to my style. He has to adapt to my style. So yeah, there was an inability for John to hit you. And I think then when we talk about gears, you went into the third game. Yeah, that's, um, that's when the natural instinct kicks in. You know, um, you know, everyone can fight, not everyone can box. And then when you see the, the act of boxing, it's beautiful rather than trying to take your head off. Yeah. And, you know, everyone loves the knockout artists and things, but also if you can actually show the display of boxing and educate people about boxing by hitting your opponent, not getting hit, and make it look like a movie and like a film trick, kind of. It, it, it was very musical, you know, it's like, you're absolutely right, when you say like the natural, it's like, oh, I'm really enjoying myself now. I'm letting my hands go in it. I'm so right. so great for the other person, obviously, but um, yeah, I mean, it was beautiful. I just wanted to talk briefly to you about um, the loss that you had before this wonderful IBF World Away title um, to Gary Kogerman. Yeah. Um, talk to me about that. Talk to me about because there was a little bit of controversy, wasn't there? Um, um, I I believe there was a controversy. There was controversial on um, the decision. It was a good fight. It was a top like it was a very close fight. But I thought I had it. One, two. The referee. Letting Gary get away with a lot of murder, which I believe he meant to be boxing, not um, wrestle or headbutt or anything else. But since the referee wasn't doing, giving any um, warnings, warnings yeah. I can't blame Gary. So because this is the thing, you are two different types. Of, he's a fighter and you're a boxer. Correct. And I understand there was a little bit of. There's the understanding for some people that you do whatever it takes to win. I, I, it's not... Um, to me, I think it's hard to, it's very... I can, we, me and Gary, we can agree and disagree on it. If you ask Gary, he clearly tells you he wins it. You ask me, I will say otherwise, because yeah. I thought I won it. That's how close the fight was, so yeah. it was a good fight. Um, he got the decision by a split decision, which I lost by a point which I thought I nicked either way. But honestly, this is part of the game. This is what yeah. makes you great. But Look, didn't you have an injury as well? Yeah, I had the one damaged hand prior to the fight. And also before that, I was training for Chris George for the Commonwealth title for months and months. Sparring partners, everything was dedicated to um, Chris George. And four weeks to the fight, everything changes that I'm fighting Gary, which I totally believe Gary was training for me while I was training for someone else. That's just my opinion. And um, I know Gary a long time. I was sparring Gary so many times. We are part, you know, and we never had any animosity mm. per the fight or mm. thing. And after the fight, we still a good mate. And of course, we talk about it and now I will say, I will speak on my view mm. to the fight and he speaks on his views to the fight. So that's just what it is. Way. So yeah. either way, it is what it is, but that's gone to the past. I'm the new IBF European title, so I moved on. Yeah, nice, nice. I like the way you just brought that back loud. It was lovely. No, it was excellent. I think it's important for people to know that if you're training for one type of fighter, then you're offered another fight. It, it, it's not as simple as just switching. Yeah, it's not. This, this is it. It's like, you sit down for exam. You're meant to be getting ready for a math exam, but you studying English. It's yes. a completely different, even though it's an exam, but it's a completely different subject. Thank you, and, and nice put as well. The other thing I like about you, Larry, is that you go back to uh, Nigeria to share your joy with that's the country. Uh, yeah, that's lovely, actually. Uh, you've had a lot of support there, haven't you? Yeah, you have to remember, I started all the way from Nigeria. 
uh, when, I, when I was 12 years old. I grew up there, came to Commonwealth Games 2000, 2002 at a Commonwealth Games and uh, I found a manager that wanted me to box as an amateur first so I can establish myself, which means I'll be able to sell a ticket as a pro. But things went terribly wrong, which I then have immigration problem for over 10 years. So I couldn't box as a pro or anything and um, have a, some personal issue outside the boxing ring. Yeah. Like my daughter was born two days, my mom died, she was born with a hole in her heart. Yeah, yeah. Um, 25 weeks old, she was born 14, 50 percent such um, shows of for survival. And, um, and money goes out the window. Like yes. Then <laughs> um, money to got my paper in 2012, which I turned pro. And the same year, after two fights, I managed to get into a prize fighter. I won the prize fighter, uh, beating someone the like like um, Chris McEwen on my third outing, um, Chris Costello and Terry Carreras in the final and everything just went back straight like from nowhere mystery man shoot up to number two in the country and um, a year after because that was towards the end of the 2012 yeah. a year after which I was training for the uh, English title eliminator against um, Clint Foot I sustained a bit of an injury which is not a massive thing but my youngest daughter um, Larissa was born, 20, I mean she was diagnosed with cancer uh, in the same year, mm. in early 2013, so boxing have to go to rest until she yeah. she's I mean, fine. So. To, to be fair, even if you had wanted to continue, I mean you mentally you wouldn't have been in a, in a place and obviously um, family always takes... That's it. Um, my children in my life, you know, the, um, um, when it comes to family, they mm. see that my family comes first. Mm. That's one, and of course, the support with Nigeria is amazing. Going back, and the good thing is, I went back with um, a, a boxing news uh, yes. photographer, and he kind of witnessed what I'm like back in Nigeria. So it's completely two different. Here, I'm different than Nigeria. It's a complete difference that we see with that, but the. Things that I wanted to, that this is what I feel like sometimes as an African fighter, we've got a stigma that we can't sell a ticket. But the honestly, the honest thing about it is if we were given a chance, any promoter would make fortune from African fighters. If you get fight televised and you get shown to the, to the world. Isaac Dogwood, for instance. Exactly. <laughs> Um, a little bit like uh, African films or, or films that have black actors, they make money as well. <laughs> it's, just, it's just what it is. It's just, I think everyone, exactly, <laughs> everyone, everyone loves successful. Doesn't matter what country. Thank you. You're doing well. So, you, my mum always said this proverb you can be the best dancer, but if you've never been invited to a dance floor, nobody knows you. So it's just the fact that if you, if we were given that opportunity to have your fight, get shown, get looked after, we would go all the way. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back to that point that your mum's just made. How do you stay motivated? Because, you know, you've had to wait. You've really had to wait in line behind people. And also because of circumstances that have happened in your life. But you're ready now. You can see it, you can see it coming out of your pores. How do you stay motivated? to be at the gym, to eat right, not to socialise, you know, drinking, dancing, partying? It's simple, pretty simple. Um, every time I wake up in the morning, my children look up to me. I can't let them down. Mm. And now I've got two girls that actually are really, really fire. And that goes to the ring with me sometimes when I realise I had my first daughter had a 40% to 50 chance of survival and she fought through. Yeah, and my daughter, my youngest, is the same. Big cancer at the age of 15 months she was diagnosed. So who am I to give up? So they motivate me. They, that's just a simple reason. Yeah. I wake up sometime and I'm like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, yeah. But 
I just can't. I really can't. I just, I just, I find the drive from. I've, I've got the picture hung somewhere in the house where I just looked at it. I just looked at it for a split second. For a split second, just look at the picture and I just go get up. This is when they want the hospital. And that's what drive me, that gave me the drive. Larry, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank I'll you. be there on the 14th cheering you on. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck with the rest of the training.